fetal biometry. After the first trimester, fetal weight and age are most accurately estimated from measurements of head circumference and biparietal diameter, abdominal circumference, and femur length. Sonographic head measurements are obtained in the transthalamic view. This sonographic view is an axial or transverse image of the fetal head. The thalmi and cavum septum pellucidum are important landmarks in this view. The biparietal diameter is measured perpendicular to the sagittal midline from the outer edge of the skull in the upper or near field to the inner edge of the skull in the lower or far field. The head circumference is measured by placing an ellipse around the outer edge of the skull. The cephalic index is the biparietal diameter divided by the occipitofrontal diameter times 100. The occipitofrontal diameter is measured from the occiput to the frontal bone. A normal cephalic index is 78% plus or minus 8%. A cephalic index below the normal range indicates dolicocephaly, shown here. Dolicocephaly may be a normal variant or may be observed in the setting of a central nervous system abnormality, such as spina bifida, a craniofacial abnormality, such as craniosynostosis, or may be positional due to oligohydramnios or breech presentation. With dolicocephaly, only the head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length should be used to calculate gestational age. A cephalic index above the normal range indicates brachycephaly, an unusually rounded head. Brachycephaly may be a normal variant. It is also common with Down syndrome, and it may occur secondary to a craniofacial abnormality or may be positional. The abdominal circumference is measured in a transverse plane in the mid-abdomen. Here, both sonographic and schematic images are seen. Sonographically, the abdominal circumference is measured at the level of the stomach and the confluence of the umbilical vein with the right portal vein and appears as a J-shaped structure. If the fetal abdomen is divided into four equal sections, the umbilical vein should appear in the second portion only. Ideally, one rib is visible on each side to indicate that the image was not taken at an oblique angle. The abdominal circumference is measured by placing an ellipse around the outer border of the skin. This parameter varies more than either the head or femur measurements and is most affected by fetal growth. In addition to the fetal stomach and umbilical vein, several other anatomic structures are visible in this view. Three ossification centers represent the vertebral body anteriorly and the junction of the vertebral laminae and pedicles posteriorly. Ideally, only one rib is visible on each side of the abdomen, indicating that the image was not taken at an oblique angle. The femur is measured along its shaft, as shown here. The femur length is measured from diaphysis to diaphysis along the long axis of the shaft. Only the femur's ossified portions are measured. The ratio of femur length to abdominal circumference normally ranges from 20 to 24 percent. If the ratio is below 18 percent, this may indicate a skeletal dysplasia and a ratio below 16% in the setting of other skeletal abnormalities suggests a lethal skeletal dysplasia. In this 21-week fetus with a lethal skeletal dysplasia, the ratio measured below 10%.